we're going to go ahead and take a look at graphing uh, lines and then also finding the equations of those lines. Now, we're going to review what slope is. Slope is basically the steepness of the line. How fast it goes up or how fast it goes down or how slow it goes up or down. Now, there's really kind of four kind of different types of lines. There's lines that go up as you go to the right, and they are in the form of y equals mx plus v and have a positive slope. And then there are lines that go down as you go to the right, and then those have a negative slope, but also in the form of y equals mx plus v. We also have horizontal lines. That means our y value is always the same, so it's always y equaling some number with no variable over there, and it would have a slope of zero because it's not going up or down. We're not rising at all, so the top is zero, and zero divided by a number is zero. We also have vertical lines. When you have a vertical line, it's x equaling zero because it's always the same x value. Your x is not changing, and you're looking at all the x's that are the same, and those are all the numbers that go straight up and down from that given x value. Now, your slope is undefined because x is not changing. The change in x is zero, and dividing by zero is undefined. Now, there's two common formulas that we use for figuring out the equations of lines. There's the point-slope formula, y minus y1 equaling m times x minus x1. Once again, m is still your slope, but the x1 and y1 is a given point. We also have your slope-intercept formula, y equals mx plus b. Most of you are probably familiar with the, that at this point, where m is your slope and b is your, where you cross your y-axis. Now, almost all the time, you're going to have an x and a y in your answer, unless you're dealing with a vertical or horizontal line. So just be prepared for that. Now y equals mx plus b is one that you're real familiar with. I personally like the point-slope formula. I find it more helpful when we are dealing with stuff and writing equations. So on this one here, we're given a slope and we're given a point that it goes through. Since you're given a slope and given a point, you have a point and a slope, we're going to use the point-slope formula. So we'll start off with a point-slope formula. So we'll go y minus the y value of our point. Remember, your point's alphabetical, x followed by y, so y is the second one. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 for my y1. My slope is m, which is the negative 3 fifths. And then x1 would be the x-coordinate of my point. All I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and get y by itself. So I'm going to distribute through my negative 3 fifths. Now notice when you subtract a negative, that's the same as adding. Distribute this through, and I get a plus 3 here. Now to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract a 2 from both sides, and I end up getting this. This would be the equation of my line. Now, that was a situation where you were given one point, and you were given your slope. If you're not given your slope, you need to first of all figure out that slope. So here we're not given our slope, we're just given two points. So we're going to use our slope formula. We're going to do the change in our y values over the changes in our x values. So I'm going to take my y of 7 minus my other y of negative 3 over my x minus my other x. So I'll simplify the top, simplify the bottom, and I get a slope of negative 2. Now I have a slope, and I have two points. Well, to use the point-slope formula, I need a slope, and I only need one point. So I'm going to just choose one of these two. It doesn't make a difference which one. You're going to get the same answer in the end. Now sometimes one of the points will have nicer numbers to work with. So I would obviously choose that one. If there isn't a big difference in which one has nicer numbers, you can use whichever one you want. So I'm going to go y minus the y-coordinate of my point, 
And I'm choosing to use the first one because it has slightly smaller numbers closer to zero. Equaling my slope, which is negative 2, times x minus the exponent of that point I chose. So now I want to get the parentheses out of there, distribute through, get y by itself, and I get my answer. So you want to go ahead and find the equation of a line that's perpendicular to this one and going through this point. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and find the slope of the line that you're given. So to do that, I need to get it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So I need to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract my 3x from both sides. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 2. And I get y equals negative 3 halves x plus 7 halves. Now, when y is on one side by itself, the number in front of x is your slope. So I get this to be my slope of my given line but it says it's perpendicular. Hopefully you remember that the slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals. So the opposite reciprocal, reciprocal means I need to take my fraction and flip it upside down. Opposite means I need to change the sign. So I need to put the two on the top, the three on the bottom, and change the sign from a negative to a positive. So I get my slope to be two thirds for my perpendicular line and it needs to go through this point. So I have a point and a slope, so once again I use my point slope formula, distribute through, solve it for y, and I get my answer. Similarly, when you're dealing with parallel, you need to get y on one side by itself, in this case it is, and hopefully you remember that with parallel lines, that the slopes of parallel lines are the same. So our slope is 3, we have our point, use our point slope formula.